I would like to welcome you in the lecture series of sensors and transducer. In this video, I would like to discuss measurement of shaft power. Before beginning of this video, I request everyone to subscribe my channel. If my channel is useful, I humbly request you to share with your friends and colleagues. Moving on to the session, how do you measure shaft power? There are different methods of measurement of shaft power. Among that, dynamometer is one of the major equipments or major techniques you can able to measure the shaft power. The shaft power will be depending on the torque and angular speed. So, shaft power can be calculated using the equation torque into omega. There are different varieties of dynamometer, absorption dynamometers, transmission dynamometers, then driving type dynamometer. These are the different varieties of dynamometers available. The absorption type dynamometer will be divided into mechanical brake, hydraulic brake and eddy current dynamometer where the transmission dynamometer is segmented into torsion and belt dynamometers, epicyclic train dynamometer and strain gauge dynamometer. If I mention about driving dynamometer, electric cradle dynamometer is the major type of driving dynamometer. Let us get understand about the varieties of dynamometers which is helped to our measurement of shaft power. Let us understand about eddy current dynamometer. Let me ask one thing, how does eddy current produce? Do you know? You know that uh, according to Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. Correct. Suppose, after the formulation of induced EMF, if the circuit is closed, definitely there is a movement of circulating current. That circulating current is known as eddy current. Eddy current leads the heating effect. The, the conductor gets heated up. That is the basic idea about eddy current. May, but the thing is, there should be a closed path. Yes. Regarding the eddy current dynamometer, first of all, we can able to see the arrangement. So, we have a toothed steel rotor. This is your rotor. It is made up of the steel material and it's of course it's a conductor and uh, even the top and bottom side there is an exciting coil the current passes to the coil whenever current passes to the coil there will be a magnetic field and also we have the shaft rotating shaft our ultimate goal is to measure the torque the uh, torque and uh, angular speed thereby we will computing the shaft power that is our ultimate target we can have an observation on the additional segments there is a cooling water arrangement here cooling water out because due to eddy current the rotor part the rotor conductor is getting heated up to balance the temperature there will be circulating water cooling water arrangement inlet and outlet can be directly visible in the diagram imagine that is a 3d dimension but uh, 2d diagram is given uh, somewhat difficult to understand however imagine just like a 3 3d 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 layout then there is an anti-friction bearing okay because of minimizing the friction some bearing has to be maintained suppose the shaft started rotating you have provided suitable excitation over the coil definitely the magnetic field generates the magnetic fields links with the steel rotor thereby induced emf formulated due to induced emf is produced due to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction you know the circuit is closed, the conductor is in a closed way. Therefore, there is a movement of circulating current. Due to the circulating current, what is the impact? The bulk amount of heat will be generated. And also it uh, prevents the movement of the shaft. There will be opposing force for the movement of the shaft. So that you can able to mention. When the isolated conductor cuts across the magnetic flux, voltage is induced and the eddy current flow starts in that circular path. The eddy current get dissipated bulk amount of heat through the particular material. That is why cooling water arrangement is placed over there. When the dynamo is operated, rotor runs and causes the constant change in flux density in the stator points and the eddy current is induced. Ultimately, eddy current is formulated. And also I told one more thing, eddy current opposes the rotation of rotor and the speed will be reduced. The angular speed is getting reduced. 
and also there is a formation of resistance in the particular uh, brake drum or brake arm so that you have to measure the resistance need to be measured the speed need to be measured thereby you can able to calculate the uh, what i can say the shaft power you can able to calculate okay so the eddy current plays most important role here and also you can check the temperature level also so may ultimately the speed will be reduced actually you know that uh, the shaft power will be directly proportional to the speed i can call the shaft power that is directly proportional to angular speed this you can able to measure you can use the tachometer and you can able to make out clear so by the way let us come back to the eddy current dynamometer here eddy current plays major role it tries to oppose the movement of rotor part thereby speed speed will be reducing so speed is going to measure in terms of the shaft power okay these are the key idea about the eddy current tachometer the main thing is uh, we can see the following advantage good control at a low rotating speed and uh, size is comparatively less suitable for higher speed range these are the major advantages of eddy current tachometer so another type of uh, arrangement of measurement of shaft power is dc dynamometer you know that uh, machines regarding the electrical machines uh, with respect to variation in the excitation sometimes machines act as motor and then machines will act as generator suppose if the if the machines act as dc machines act as generator definitely the torque will be negative right if the machines act as motor then torque will be a positive that point you have to remember clear okay by the way let us come to the point so depends on the particular values of torque you can able to produce suppose if the torque is negative if suppose if the machine acts as motor obviously you are able to get the positive torque if the machine acts as generator uh, then uh, definitely you are able to get the value of torque is negative so likewise you can able to predict so this type of arrangement is known as dc dynamometer so dc machine acts as both generator and motor it works as a generator when it is coupled to a machine under the touch under the test which is a power generating machine so that is the key point of dc dynamometer in this video i have mainly discussed about the different methods of measurement of uh, shaft power so we had a brief discussion how do you calculate the shaft power so afterwards what i did is i have listed out different methods of measurement of shaft power in that i have concentrated mainly eddy current dynamometer you, i have recalled what is an eddy current how the eddy current can be applied for the measurement of shaft power so due to the eddy current the movement the speed will be actually reduced because it opposes the rotation of rotor and uh, we found out the advantages of eddy current dynamometer so thereafter we have discussed about dc dynamometer you can able to measure the dc dynamometer uh, and you can able to measure the value of the shaft power indirectly by using dc dynamometer so these are the major points which we discussed in this session uh, you have do you have any queries if you are having any doubts or if you want to share me the ppt definitely you can give a comment i am going to share the ppt to you and hope this will be helpful for you for your exam point as well as your viva finally thank you very much for watching to this particular video